since we've been discussing inner conversations to enter into and live from the ideal mental state of fulfilled desires, which is done by speaking inwardly with pure intention. And by this I mean specifically speaking from your heart and intuition, which is beyond the inharmonious made-up beliefs of this world, not true to how you desire to live ideally. Simply put, listening to yourself and trusting yourself. And so I felt it would be true to the occasion to revisit the power of your spoken word by Florence Scovel Shin. And thus, here are my 2023 reflections on the book. So in Tuesday's video, I mentioned returning to the position of the observer, which could sound like an oxymoron because you are the observer. What I mean is observe without reacting to past inharmonious beliefs in mind. You don't have to react to them. It's a choice. If you didn't have a choice, you would move around like a puppet on the screen of space to the tune of those beliefs and perhaps call it fate. Now, as we do this, we clear up the mind. We receive then within the intuition of what to do or not do or how to relate to the circumstance. And this is pure observation. From the position of the observer, we also release the grip of psychological control which is the identification to inharmonious beliefs and allow everything to happen on its own ideally in relation to your vision, done for you as a flow-based path of least resistance to realizing your vision. As she says here, so many people are leading such complicated lives because they are trying to think things out instead of intuiting the way out. So there it is, as I often say, you already know what you want and you already know how to get there by releasing identification to inharmonious past beliefs by not reacting. You have a choice. It's up to you to create your life from those inharmonious beliefs or to allow the invisible power to flow from your vision to take care of everything for you And even if you require an answer, an idea, or a plan, it shows up inside via intuition. Or it may reflect somewhere outside or through someone. Nevertheless, it first shows up inside via intuition before it reflects outside. And this is how I've been doing this since I discovered this information in 2004 with Think and Grow Rich. Specifically, what I'm referring to here is the auto-suggestion and the sixth sense chapter. And we've all known this since children. I've recalibrated over the years to a higher degree of trusting intuition to the point of exclusivity, as it always knows the way for me, as Steve Jobs said in his commencement speech. Follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you want to become. Everything else is secondary. So I believe, from my experience, and I've observed this with many that I've spoken with, since we were children, we have always known, to at least some degree, what we wanted to experience in our life, the kind of life we wanted to have. And there were signs for me, for example, I've always been known to be rebellious, unconventional, and fascinated by discovering unconventional yet innovative, accelerated approaches to producing results, which led me to entrepreneurship in 2009. As she says here, we see children lovingly absorbed in their play. Great inventors are never bored with their work, or they would not bring forth great inventions. Never try to force a child to be something they do not want to be. And you and I are no different. We are both formless awareness, and we give form to this world by what we believe. So allow yourself to accept as true what you have always known as true. This is very much in alignment with Montessori education. 
They allow children to roam freely and discover their own path, which they already know, and further encourage them on this self-discovery journey to cultivate their natural way of being. I made a learning and teaching video where I mentioned this last year. I'll link in the description to that video. They allow children the freedom to choose whatever activities that they want while having a supportive framework to select materials that align with their genuine interest as they work independently and collaboratively as applicable to learn, which also facilitates a nice degree of stimulating challenge rather than teaching them to be overwhelmed by challenge. Essentially, this is flow-based learning. And here they develop a healthy relationship with challenge. They don't fight or flight it. They see life as a fun puzzle because they know they have all the power to transmute challenges into opportunities, or as we say in alchemy, base metals into gold. As she says here, many people are using personal power instead of God power, which always brings unhappy reaction. Personal power means forcing personal will. So this is the key to a fulfilling life. Being aligned with what you truly desire, in which you can easily call upon the power, rather than forcing yourself to believe something you don't want to believe, which is not in harmony with how you truly desire to be. One is an effortless, flow-based, authentic path full of joy and fulfillment and learning, and the other oftentimes a path of stress and frustration, which is not aligned with one's true desire of being. And speaking of forcing personal will, which it is to me not accepting that what we desire is already an established fact, which is done for and through us by divine will, which she elaborates further on it in the following. The moment it becomes hard work, we are not advancing. And I look back on my experiences in the art world. I see how true this is. From the Academy of Fine Arts in Philadelphia came eight men, all of about the same age, who became distinguished and successful artists. They were called the eight in contemporary art. None of them was ever known to work hard. They never drew from the antique. They never did anything in an academic way. They simply expressed themselves. See this part here? This is where all the power is, literally. They simply express themselves. I can't tell you how many times in my past I would look around to see what others are doing, how they are living, and determine, based on what I'm seeing, how I should live, rather than listening to my heart and intuition. And this resulted in the hard work she was referring to. And by hard work in this context, we're referring to forcing ourselves to do what we don't love to do or doing something we committed to do from the premise of frustrating and stressful rather than from a state of flow. Remember, you choose the state you occupy and operate from. Certainly, we're committed to our work. However, we don't want to be frustrated by it. See your work as a fine art, which it is, and operate from that premise. Also worth mentioning, beyond the work that I was doing from a state of flow, I have felt the unseen hand move the energies, the subtle energies, and everything in the backgrounds to be in harmony with my vision, as things seem to the five senses to happen automatically, naturally, and ideally, as I went about what I was going to do anyways from a state of flow. And also this has another benefit, remaining in this flow state. We experience intuitive inner conversations in relation to whatever circumstance that shows up so we can see it clearly from the perspective of our vision rather than from identification to past inharmonious beliefs which create unnecessary resistance which can then play out 
as unnecessary complexity and convoluted behavior. And so allow yourself to have your style. For example, I feel inspired to snowboard or travel or move around even during my workday, which for me facilitates my flow. And from there, I get plenty of high leverage insights from my business. And I also find that I don't judge by appearances as I'm not stuck in my head and I'm able to see things clearly from my vision, as she says here. If one judges by appearances, they find themselves in an arena most of the time, the arena of adverse conditions and facing lions of lack and limitation. A person who knows the power of the word becomes very careful of his conversation. They have only to watch their reaction of their words to know that they do not return void. You must be immune to all discouragement and adverse appearances. So I get a lot of emails about appearances. And universally, I say, if you were in your ideal state of mind, you would see things as in harmony and in contribution. And these perspectives are revealed by the intuitive inner conversations which you speak to yourself inside in relation to the experiences and thus you know the truth about appearances. And thus always remember, it is what is spoken inside that appears outside. And so I recommend keeping this simple and make flow your priority. And in a flow-based way of being, your inner conversations are automatically ideal in relation to whatever you experience. And those wonderful intuitive words you speak of inside shall not return void and reflect as pleasant experiences on the journey to realizing your vision. So as you remain in your ideal flow-based intuitive path, you'll know truth and speak it inside. And everything will make sense as you find yourself in a deep state of inner peace and joy, which reflects accordingly, as she says here. After making statements of truth, you suddenly have a flash of realization. You suddenly feel yourself in a new environment. You feel old, negative conditions falling away. I once said to a woman, the walls of lack and delay now crumble away, and you enter your promised land under grace. She said she had a sudden flash of a wall crumbling away, and she stepped over it. Soon after that, the change came, and she really did enter her promised land of plenty. Now this is clarity and peace of mind, oriented from your definite chief aim to borrow from Think and Grow Rich. So I'd encourage changing whatever in your life that is not in harmony to facilitating flow and clarity. And speaking of clarity, I find we gain clarity as we remain committed to our vision. And so thus, there's no need to worry about clarity. It automatically shows up inside via intuition. So you see then, we always know what to say to ourselves in relation to whatever shows up if we listen to ourselves beyond the mental chatter. The still, soft voice provides you with auto-suggestions, which you can repeat to yourself till it becomes your way of being. That's what I do. I may or may not listen to others, but I will absolutely listen to my intuition. I mean, really, look at all these new thought books. This is where they got all these distinct ideas from. They got them from inside, from their intuition. And the same is to be said about spiritual information. By definition, it is spiritual information. And spiritual information is revealed by intuition. As she says here, prayer is telephoning to God and intuition is God telephoning to you. She states, clear vision is like having a compass. Let intuition be your compass and it will always get you out of the woods. Even one without an actual compass, led by intuition, would find their way out of the jungle or be able to steer a ship at sea. It is amazing how people have overlooked their most important 
faculty, intuition. And this is true. Intuition has always guided me to realizing my desires. So the question is simple then. Are we listening to the voice of our ideal or this world made up of beliefs, which some may be helpful and some not so much? And which ones are helpful? Well, listen to your intuition and you'll know. And if we do this, there will be no need to stress and worry to try and figure things out. Whatever is to be done shall be done for you automatically and whatever you are to do or not do, you'll know. The inspiration comes from the silent and appears in mind, from beyond the mental chatter, as she says here. We must stop planning, plotting, and scheming and let infinite intelligence solve the problems in its own way. God power is subtle, silent, and irresistible. It levels mountains and fills in valleys and knows no defeat. Our part is to prepare for our blessings and follow our intuitive leads. So you simply imagine or say something to yourself in a way that implies that you already have what you desire and accept that suggestion. Then, some way, somehow, things happen. And if there's ever any doubt, we have intuition. She says, Your consciousness may be crammed and jammed with destructive ideas, but continually making a statement of truth will dissolve these negative thought forms. These thought forms have been built up from your own vain imaginings. Perhaps as a child, you were taught that life was hard, happiness fleeting, and that the world was cold and unfriendly. These ideas were impressed upon your subconscious, and you found things just as they were predicted. With the knowledge of truth, all these external pictures may be changed, for they are only pictures, which change as your subconscious beliefs change. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I receive within the words of truth as affirmations in relation to whatever shows up on the journey to realizing my vision from the perspective of how it truly is, which is in harmony and in contribution to my vision in the spirit of harmony with all, as others, resources, energies, subtle energies, show up automatically in harmony with my vision in a mutually beneficial way, to bring forth my vision lovingly on the path of blissful flow and least resistance. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.